Welcome to Squamish Christian Fellowship's online worship. I hope you are doing well today and I hope that you are always safe. And uh, as we continue to worship the Lord, as we offer our lives and uh, our time to Him, may this worship be an encouragement for us. May this worship be a blessing for everyone. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day that you have given us. It's uh, 
cold, but it's sunny. And we thank you for everything. We thank you for keeping us safe every day. And as you remind us tonight, as we listen to your words, may this be a life for us. May this message change our perspective. May, our, may this message change our priorities. And may we seek you first. And may we put you first. And may we give what you deserve, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen and Amen. Here in Canada, uh, one of the uh, facts that uh, we cannot escape here is tax. Uh, Canada is known for having a bigger tax and especially British Columbia. I think we have the highest uh, uh, tax rate in the whole Canada. Uh, Alberta has five, Yukon has five, uh, other provinces have uh, lower uh, taxes. But here, we have 1% uh, tax. So when, when you earn something, when you earn money, you have to pay tax. You have to pay uh, taxes to the government. And uh, if you are doing under the table, if you, you're doing like cleanings or uh, some uh, quick jobs and quick money, easy money jobs, uh, these might not be included in your uh, T4 and that will be submitted to the government, to the CRA, and uh, you will not be obliged to pay uh, for uh, pay taxes with, with these extra incomes. But we should be. We, we should to... We should have uh, pay uh, taxes with everything that we earn here in Canada. Another disadvantage of that is that when you do not declare your, your, your income, all of the money that you have in, in the near future, if you're uh, buying a house or, or, or applying for a loan, you might get a really small approval of the amount. So taxes is important. Taxes... Uh, does the the work of the government here in Canada if you uh, give birth you have one year to one and a half years of uh, maternity leave we pay <laughs> so if, if we will convert it in into Philippine peso you have 70,000 pesos a, ma a month for the whole year because you gave birth and you have to take care of your daughter or 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 your or your son and if you lost your job you can apply for EI for uh uh, uh employment insurance and, and there's so many things there are so many benefits that uh uh the, that that the government gets the fund from our taxes and in in Mark chapter 12 verses 13 to 17 Jesus and the people, the, the Pharisees, the Herodians, are trying to catch Jesus and they talk about tax. So, tax is our obligation to the government. Tax is our part so the economy of the government will grow. The economy that the government can do its job and, 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 and the benefits will go back to its people. It, it should be that way, not into the politician's pocket. So what happened here is that the Pharisees and the Herodians want to catch Jesus. They try to catch Jesus from his words because they've been planting so many things because Jesus, when Jesus came, he's shaken all those traditions. He's shaken the Pharisees. He's shaken the leaders of the church, the elders of the church, of the temple. And they came to Jesus in verse 14. They said, Teacher, we know that you are a man of integrity. You are enslaved by others because you pay attention who they are. But you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? So they're trying to, to catch Jesus with this situation. And, and we know that in that time is that the the, the the Jerusalem the Israelites were were under captivity they they were uh, they 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 were not uh, freed yet 
So are they obliged to pay tax to, to uh, Caesar? Should we pay or shouldn't we? Because if, if Jesus said no, then the government will, will catch him and the government will have the reason to catch him. But Jesus knew their hypocrisy. Why are you trying to trap me? He asked, bring me a denarius and let me look at it. And then what, what happened? They brought the coin to Jesus and he asked him, whose image is in the coin? And whose prescription, inscription? They said, Caesar's, they replied. Then Jesus said to them, give back to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God, what is God's? And they were amazed at him. So the first thing is that we need to pay our taxes. We should, we should pay our taxes, okay? So no one should escape by uh, doing uh, extra things and, and under the tables. We are part of the government. So we should pay our taxes right. That, that, that's what uh, uh, transparency uh, does here in Canada because when you pay too much taxes, they will refund you. If you pay not enough taxes for the whole year, uh, you, you owe them. You have to pay them more in, in tax season. Another thing that Jesus said is that we give what we need to give to the government and we give what we need to give to God. So it's settled in, in two things. The one, you, if, you, if you are under the government, you pay what you have to pay. You pay the taxes. You have to be legal. You have to work legally. You have to do what is right. Second, if you are part of God's kingdom, if you are, if you are part of God's people, you give what is God's. And what are God's? In, in uh, Genesis chapter 1, heavens and earths are God's. We know that our lives is owned by God. We, God created us. God, everything comes from God. We know it. And it means that this is for God. Our life itself is for God. Because He did not create us just to, to be nothing. God created us for, for a purpose. God has created us to worship Him, to praise Him, and to live a life according to His will. In Exodus chapter 20, when, when God gave uh, the Ten Commandments, one of the commandments was, You shall have no other gods before me. What are gods? He should be your only God. He should be our only God. No other gods before Him. Do you hear what I'm trying to say? It means God created us and we are His. So we should have no other God before Him. For so long, when we read the Bible, the journey of God's people of the people are there are living God when they meet someone they meet some God gods that they think that uh, these gods will bless them so what they will do is they will leave God Yahweh they will leave Jesus and worship these small gods a cow an image that's why in, in the Ten Commandments don't don't make any image that made of woods, that made of anything, and worship and bow down to them. That's why we don't have images in our church. Because we don't we follow what the Ten Commandments says. We don't worship them. We, we don't bow to, to the saints and, and, and images and, and, and statues. That's one of the commandments. We shall no, have no other gods before Yahweh, before our God, before our Lord, before Jesus. And in Matthew chapter 6, it's not just about having an image or, or statue and you're going to bow to it. But we're 
our heart, uh, our money is, our treasure is, there our heart is. It means that when we treasure God, our heart is in God. When we treasure money, our heart is in money. And what does, uh, what does Matthew 6 six says? We cannot worship two gods. So it is important to give what is for God. To give our hearts, to give our minds, to give our whole being to God. So we seek, we seek God first. Because it's not just the, the statue, the image, the cow, the trees, the mountains are God are, are, are the things that we can have or we can worship before God, but even our money, but even our priorities, but even our dreams, but even our families, even our cars and, and fame. And everything in this world, the material things in this world can be our gods before God. So we have to learn our priorities. We have to learn how to balance things. We, have no, we, we should have no other gods before our God. It's not bad to have these things. But make sure that we don't worship them. What does it mean? We don't put our hearts to them. We don't put our trust to them. Your, your heart and trust and mind to your job and to your friends and your families, even family sometimes. And material things in this world. We don't put our trust and future to it, to those things. But we put our trust in the Lord. Because we should have no other gods before Him. What, what are gods? In, in, in uh, Exodus uh, chapter 20 verse 8, Remember the Sabbath day by, but by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor, do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath for the Lord your God. That's why the, 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 the seventh day is our Sabbath. The day we, we give a day to worship the Lord. We gather together to worship the Lord. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25, do not neglect meeting together. This is the day of the Lord. Every day is the day of the Lord. But this is specific day, the day that we, we give in our fellowship, we do it Saturday. Because we don't have other uh, place to gather but, but Saturday. And, and if, if it's free, it's Sunday morning, that's okay. Find a church. If you have work on Saturday, find a church that you can be with every Sunday morning. And if you have work on Sunday and you did your best, but, but you know, our situation here in Canada is that we cannot control our schedule. So if you are available Saturday or free Saturday, come in our fellowship. Be to be in, in, in the in the be with us, be in the presence of God with this fellowship. And here's the thing: we are not gathering into a building yet. But you can be, you can practice your Sabbath, you can practice your time for the Lord through this worship. Through our Saturday fellowship. Or if you don't, if you're working Saturday afternoon, we have the midweek worship. But the question is, the question here is that are you prioritizing God? Are you making efforts to be in a worship? Pastor Norman, I really want to be in the church. I just I don't want to to uh just watch in the in the in the Facebook live and and watch. I want to be inside the church. Let me know. I can I can uh, refer you to our brothers and to to our uh, uh, church's friends here in 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 Squamish. Our our Baptist brothers are gathering. They have their own building. Our uh, Church of Ninety Nine, the Rock, and, and other churches here are gathering because they have their own buildings. So let me know. I can refer you to them and I can uh, bring you them to, so that you can be in to worship. 
so that you can practice your Sabbath. That you make this day for God. And you know what? Here's the thing. Eh? It, it's, we're not expanding the whole day. It's just an hour for the church. And here, 20, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Just to listen to the praise and sing praise and worship songs and listen to the words is a way that we practice our Sabbath. Is a way of saying, Lord, I want to know you more. I want to praise you more. And I will give this time for you. What are God's? Our time. Our talent. How do we use our talent to God? For God. If you know how to sing, do you sing for God? If you know how to... Uh, uh, other ways to, to serve God, like for now we have the video recordings, video editings, and other ways. Are you giving it to God? We can give it to the social media, we record videos, right? We do YouTube, we do uh, TikTok, we do Facebook. But how about God? So how's your time? Do you give to God what is for God in your time? Or we give your leftovers? Lord, when I have time, I will listen. Lord, when I have time, I will attend church. Lord, when I have time, I will sing and pray. How is your talent? Lord, I'm so busy in, in, in so many things now. One day I will go to church. Sunday I will serve you. One day I will serve you. But now I have to prioritize these things. How about your treasure? Your time, your talent, your treasure. In Malachi chapter 3, the people are asking, How, how, how can we rob God? It, 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 God was, was talking in verse 8, Malachi chapter 3, verse 8, Will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me. And then, they, But you ask, how are we robbing you? If, if, we, if we read uh, Malachi chapters uh, 1 and 2, you'll understand 3. In tithes and offerings. You're robbing me in tithes and offerings. Why? Because what? They are giving animals and tithes and offerings with blemishes the leftovers the, the the things that are leftovers are not are, are are what they are giving to god not the best they are they are giving not full they are giving the leftovers they are giving the the animals that have blemishes and god told them you are robbing me because what you have to give me is the best. And in, in verse 10, and, and here's the thing, here's the challenge. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that they may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessings that world, there will be no room to store it. See, what happens is that we rob what is for God. We rob the time for what is for God. We rob the talent, the service, the worship, the praise, what that is for God. We rob the treasure that is for God. And what do we give? The leftovers. The time that we don't need. The talent that when we are tired and we still have a little bit more strength, we give it. Not when we are healthy. Not when we are able. Not when we can do our best. Even in, in, in treasures. Even in money. When we give our tithes and offerings. Or do we still give our tithes and offerings? When we give, what do we give? The leftovers. The, the smallest amount that we can get from our pocket. What are for gods? 
in Malaga chapter 1. Will you give a governor? Will you give, you try to give your governor a gift that is broken? A, an animal that has blemish. Have you tried it? When we give something, when we give gift to our friends, you will not give the leftovers, especially when it's birthday, you know, when when the when when the person is special for us, what do we do? We buy them special. We buy them expensive things. We buy them the, the, the best things that we can give. Why? Because that person is special for us. And now let's compare God. What do we give to God? What do we offer to God? What do we honor to God? And how do we honor God? Is it the way we think for that special person or special someone? Or we give the leftovers to our God? Brothers and sisters, give what are for Caesars. Give what are for the government. Give what are for the people that we value around us. And also give what are for God's. The people, the government, the special persons are not over our God. So if we give special to them, we don't give leftovers to God because God is beyond everything. We shall have no other gods before Him. So if we can give special things to these special people and loved ones, how much more to the God that we serve? How much more to the God that we believed on? Give what is for God. And you know what's the challenge here? You know what's the challenge and promise of God? Do this. Bring your tithes and offering. Bring the whole tithes and offerings. Do this. And I will open the floodgates of heaven and pour the blessings to you. And here's the thing. You will have no enough storage to store it. Isn't it amazing? Why? Because we cannot outgive God. Remember this always. If you give time to him, you cannot outgive him with time. If you give your talent to him, you cannot outgive him with your talent. When you give treasures to him, you cannot outgive him with your treasures. Because in the first place, he owns everything. What happens when we trust him? What happens when we give what to His? He sees our faith. And because He sees our faith, the flat gates of heaven opens and pour the blessings, so much blessings, that you will have no storeroom to store it. Brothers and sisters, give what is for God. Your time, your talent, your treasure. Amen. Lord, forgive us that sometimes we rob you, or most of the times we rob you. We rob you with our strength. We rob you with our time. We rob you with our talent. We rob you with our treasures. What we give to you are leftovers. Leftover of our time, of our strength. We will worship you if we have time remaining. We will worship you if we have strength, a remaining strength, if we are not tired yet, but not prioritizing you. Forgive us, O God. And thank you for reminding us this evening that you should be our priority because you are our Lord and our God and you owns the whole world and we are yours so teach us oh God to remember 
to give what is yours because you are the most holy and the most loving and the most gracious and the most merciful God. May you find us faithful, Lord. May we start living a life that pleases you. May we start living a life that prioritizes you. Teach us, O oh God, and help us, O oh God. Brothers and sisters, as we welcome the new week of life, as we go, as we close into this worship, may we all go having the benediction of God, His grace and His love and mercy. The salvation of Jesus Christ through His death on the cross and the guidance and the power of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen and Amen. Thank you for joining us tonight at Squamish Christian Fellowship's online worship. I hope to see you again on Wednesday for our midweek worship and on Saturday 7 p.m. here in Facebook Live and we have the videos in YouTube for the whole worship. Magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. Amen and Amen.